built his house upon the rock. He built his house upon the rock, and on the rock he stood. He built his house real good. The wise man built his house upon the rock. He built his house upon the rock, and on the rock he stood. He built his house real good.
AT&T, welcome back to section 4.4. I'm um, excited to be able to join you guys again, uh, even though it is digitally. Uh, I am excited to be able to jump back into God's Word and be able to uh, take you guys through uh, another lesson. So, uh, like I said, we're going through 4.4. Uh, the title is Discovery of Kindness and Goodness, and hopefully you guys had a chance to memorize your verse this week. Also, go through your actual questions um, and be able to you know, have a little dialogue with your parents as well. Um, but uh, what we're going to do this week is actually have you guys send us... Um, video clips. So have your parents send uh, Mrs. Lee video clips um, of you guys doing your memory verse. Um, and we'll actually be able to include those into uh, next week's video. So uh, excited to be able to see uh, your guys' faces again, uh, memorizing those verses. And um, hopefully it's an incentive for you guys to be able to get your faces on one of these videos as well. So um, with that, let's jump into section 4.4. Um, we are, we'll start with the memory verse. So it's Ephesians 2.10 for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Um, so we'll kind of go into a little bit more detail about what um, it means to discover uh, kindness and goodness um, and the difference between um, just being kind and good um, in the world's eyes, but um, actually having kindness and goodness that comes from having a relationship with God. So we discover kindness and goodness when we show our love for God and for others by doing good works for them. When we discover God's grace, we also discover kindness and goodness. God has created each of us so that we could do good works, so that he could do good works in us and through us. And in order to fulfill God's plan for us, we need to follow the following steps. First, we need to follow God's commands to love him with all of who we are and to love others as ourselves, which is the greatest commandment, right? Luke uh, 10. Uh, we can only discover kindness and goodness when our hearts are motivated by love. Next, we need to study godly examples of people who showed kindness and goodness to others. So obviously we'll be able to read through you know, scripture and be able to see um, people having sacrificial love and um, ultimate kindness and ultimate goodness, uh, but also one of the main importances of um, finding a good, solid Bible teaching church is to be able to find uh, mentors in, in the faith, to be able to um, see the ways that they've shown kindness and goodness to others. Um, and hopefully your parents are an excellent model as well uh, to be able to show kindness and goodness um, in their lives uh, towards others because of what God has done for them. 
Uh, continuing on, um, you know, Bible examples, um, we can think of Jonathan. So Jonathan was kind to David, even though David would one day be crowned king instead of Jonathan. Um, the good Samaritan was kind and good to someone whom he would not have considered to be a friend, right? Um, four friends took their uh, lame friends, so their friend that couldn't walk. They took them uh, to Jesus to be healed, and even when that uh, act of kindness was difficult. So I'm sure you guys have heard, you know, all the intricate details of that story, but um, to <laughs> climb up onto the roof, to take apart, um, you know, roof tiles, um, and to carry a friend, and um, across hot, dusty roads to find Jesus, to um, see that the house was, you know, overrun and there was no um, place to be able to even sneak their way in. So they literally climbed on top of the roof and peeled their way in and dropped their friend in. Um, that is a um, very difficult and very arduous, um, you know, act of love and act of kindness that they showed their friend. Um, and also, um, we need to recognize that God created us to do good works. We are his masterpieces and God wants us to uh, work God wants to work in us through kindness and goodness. So when we study God's word and choose to follow God's plan for us, we will begin to see opportunities in our lives to show kindness and goodness. As we do so, others will see God's good work in us, and they will discover their need for a relationship with a loving God. Um, so once again, kind of the, um, you know, one thing that we want to make sure is important for us is to see the difference between the way that the world would view someone as being kind and the way that um, God wants us to be kind. So our motivation is the fact that God was ultimately kind to us, that he sent his son to die for our sins, which he didn't have to do. Um, but um, he showed ultimate love for us by dying for our sins, even when we were his enemy. So um, that's, you know, the, the thing we'll get into a little bit more. Um, so um, as you guys are going through the lesson, um, you know, one of the, the first portions was asking you guys to either draw out a picture or write out a sentence of the last time that you did something uh, for someone else um, without expecting anything in return. So, um, you know, if you're looking for kind of a good cheater definition of what um, a Christian goodness or a Christian kindness is, is being kind or good to someone without expecting anything in return um, and even finding opportunities where you know that person can't do anything in return. Um, so, um, I'd love to definitely hear uh, those opportunities or th those uh, examples that you guys have drawn out. But if you want to share that with your uh, parents, this would be a great time for you guys to stop the video and kind of have that dialogue. Um, and some of the questions, parents, if you're watching, um, you can ask them is, you know, how did that person respond when um, your child was being um, ultimately kind um, to them without, um, you know, having even an opportunity for um a response, um, and how did you feel? How did that make you feel um, to be kind to someone, um, knowing that they weren't going to be able to, you know, give you anything in return? Um, and then, um, kind of a good way to um, think of it is how much effort did you have to put into um, being kind to someone, and knowing that sometimes there is a lot of work that goes into it, and sometimes it's just something super simple, um, but. Um, you know, what is the, what is the motivating factor is it because God has been so kind to us that we want to be kind to others. Um, or once again, going, kind of going back to that first question, um, were you doing something kind so that you would get something in return? So, um, good, good time now to be able to take inventory of that and be able to talk it through, um, between uh, you and your parents. So getting into the, um, kind of main teaching portion of uh, the section here. So um, we discover kindness and goodness when we discover God's grace. So God's amazing grace and love for us causes us to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. We are also to love others as ourselves. Practicing kindness and goodness only happens when we have this kind of love. So Luke 10, 27, um, Jesus is quoted as saying, he answered them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and you, your neighbor as yourself. Uh, so once again, going back to, you know, the most important commandment. Um, we discover kindness and goodness when we study godly examples. God's word gives us examples after example of people who showed kindness and goodness to others. So Jonathan, um, we can kind of read a quick little snippet in 1 Samuel chapter 18. Um, it says, as soon as he had finished... Um, Speaking to Saul, and the, uh, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David and his armor and even his sword and his bow and his belt. 
Um, we'll even finish it off with verse five. And David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him, so that Saul sent him over the men, uh, set him over the men of war. And this was a good, and this was good in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Uh, so David um, and Jonathan. So that relationship with Jonathan was overly abundantly kind um, to help David in all circumstances. Um, is an awesome example. Um, the Good Samaritan. So in Luke ten, um, it talks about. In verse, uh, um, we can kind of jump ahead to verse 29. Um, and he said, but desiring to justify himself, um, the, the Pharisee responded, or the teacher of the law uh, responded, um, who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, a man was going down uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him um, and departed, leaving him half dead. And now by chance, a priest was going down that road. And when he saw, saw that person laying on the road, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But finally, a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went, at, he went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and then he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, and saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you. Um, I will repay you when I come back. Um, and then Jesus is asking, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And the guy answered, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said, you go and do likewise. Um, so once again, uh, kind of going back to the, um, the commandments that we had last week that's kind of disguised as just like either an encouragement or um, just something that doesn't necessarily seem like a, an exact order, but it truly is a commandment from, uh, from God's word is do not be anxious. This is another thing. Go and do likewise. Go and be kind. This is a commandment, um, and this is also something that, um, you know, <laughs> kind of gives us back uh, a, a little internal um, reward uh, of us feeling good um, that we are able to show kindness um, and us recognizing God's kindness to us and then pouring that out on others. Um, this is an awesome opportunity for us to um, follow out actually a command um, that God has given us in his word. Um, and then finally, the the four friends um, that um, brought the lame man or the person who couldn't walk uh, to Jesus. Um, and you can find that in Mark 2. I'm not going to um, go into those details, but I'm sure you guys have read that story before. Um, when we discover kindness and goodness, we do good works. We are God's workmanship. He saved us and he created us to good to do good works that bring him glory. Um, Ephesians 2 talks about that in verse 10, uh, says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Um, God is at work in us and through us to do these good works. It says that in Philippians 2, uh, verse 13, it says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Finally, we discover kindness and goodness when we seek to glorify God and obey his commands. As we study God's word and trust in his love, we will begin to see opportunities in our lives to show kindness and goodness. Um, finishing off in Galatians 6.10, it kind of reiterates this. It says, So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are the household of faith. Um, so once again, going back to um, being able to find you know, examples um, in God's word is definitely a, a great way for us to be able to see people that are showing kindness, uh, but then even um, within the, the church community to be able to see mentors or uh, people who are more mature in their faith um, and seeing the things that they're doing to show kindness um, and goodness, um, to show kindness and goodness to others um, for the sake of Christ because of what Christ has done in their lives. Um, this is, you know, a, a, a commandment from um, from God's word in Galatians 6, it says, um, to, you know, do good to everyone, but especially to those who are the household of faith. Um, so once again, going back to what is a, a challenge, how can you guys make this practical? Um, and we'll kind of get into the question part and I'll start it off with, you know, the most important practical one. What can you guys do? So knowing that, um, you know, there is an opportunity for us to show um, practical goodness, practical kindness to others in our church community. Um, what is it that you're going to um, commit to this week um, to be able to show kindness and goodness to others um, because of what God has done for you? Um, other questions is, um, you know, just having a flat out definition of kindness and goodness. And how is that definition different? Um, how is Christian kindness and Christian goodness different than what the world would consider kind or what the world would cons consider good? Um, 
And I would say finally, the, the last question to really kind of consider, um, especially as you guys are you know, looking for uh, new motivations and new things to be able to attach your mind to as you're going through your daily Bible reading or um, you know, whatever your, your reading schedule is for God's word. Um, as you search through God's word, um, how can you um, help someone uh, or how can God's word help someone to be kind and good to others? So what is it out of that verse uh, or what is it out of that section of verses um, that you're seeing that is a uh, commandment for us to be kind and to show goodness to others um, and, you know, commit that to memory. Um, and that definitely helps uh, bring uh, a new light or a new um, view on something that I'm sure you've read, you know, hundreds of times before, or at least a dozen times before, um, as I know you guys are going through God's word with your parents, which is awesome. Uh, but it's definitely a, um, a new way to look um, at God's word as an instruction for us to show kindness and goodness to others because of what God has done for us. Okay, um, let's finish it off with prayer, and then, um, yeah, I got a few closing statements, so let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for um, your kindness and your goodness to us. Um, God, we thank you for the ultimate kindness, and that is um, sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. Um, what a... Um, what a feat that was, God, that we uh, could not have a relationship with you, God, that we were uh, your enemies, that we were rejecting you, and you um, still um, sent your son to die for our sins, uh, even though we were your enemies. And so, God, we're so grateful for that. We're thankful um, that it is um, something so simple that we can turn from our sins and place our trust in you and that we can have uh, eternal life. And we thank you that you haven't left us just on our own to figure out, you know, our own way, God. You have given us the Holy Spirit that empowers us to walk in the good works that you have set up for us. Um, so, God, I pray that um, for everyone watching that they would have um, the boldness to walk in those good works as it may um, seem like they may be missing out on, um, you know, enjoying things that they have or um, time that they are thinking that they should be keeping to themselves. But, God, I pray that they would take uh, inventory of how much you have blessed them and how much that means um, that they can bless others because of what you've done for them. And uh, God, I pray that uh, those acts of kindness and those acts of goodness will spark conversations on uh, the reason for the hope that's within these um, these kiddos watching, that uh, they will be able to point to uh, Jesus Christ and his death on the cross as the reason that they have um, this motivation uh, to do these good works. And uh, may that um, spark a conversation where someone will repent of their sins and place their trust in you. I lift all these things up in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, so once again, kind of finishing off, just some some closing thoughts. Um, we are God's ma masterpiece, and he created, uh, created us to do good works. Um, so once again, kind of going back to the whole... Uh, concept of, you know, once we become a Christian, um, what is it that we're here to do? Um, God has laid it out perfectly in his word that we are to walk in good works that he has laid out before us. Um, and when we allow God to work in us and through us, we will discover how to show kindness and goodness to others. Um, so once again, when um, it comes to the concept of, you know, what is it that um, if you, like I said, or like I've said before, um, a, a Christian is someone who's usually choosing, um, it's not usually choices between good and bad, it's usually choices between better and best. Um, and so when you think through the concept of what am I supposed to do with my time or with my money um, or with this ability that God has blessed me with, um, the, these are times for, like it says, um, we will discover how to show kindness and goodness to others. So um, you can be looking through and as you're praying through and as you're reading through God's word and as you're talking to, um, you know, your Christian friends and your family um, on what are these, what can I do with all of this um, either, you know, financial resources, time resource, um, just skill resources that I may have, what can I do to bless others? Um, that is, um, that's the motivation for you to say, I'm not going to keep it to myself. I'm actually going to utilize these things to show kindness and goodness to others, um, to hopefully at the very least, it'll draw my mind towards God, but, um, will hopefully draw this person who's receiving this, um, good work or this kindness, um, and it'll draw their mind towards God. And so that they'll glorify God too. Awesome. Um, so like I said, I'm hoping to see your guys' uh, verses uh, memorized this week. So have your parents send videos to Mrs. Lee, and we'll be able to clip those into next week's video. And until then, we'll see you later. Bye, guys. Second Thessalonians 3.16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, in every way. The Lord be with you all. Kelsey, can you recite First Timothy 6.11, please? 11. But as for you, O man of God, flee these things, pursue righteousness, 
godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. 1 Timothy 6, 11. 1 Peter 5, 10. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. 1 Peter 5, 10.